Welcome, ladies and gents, to another casted game. And this one is primarily looking at something very, very scary indeed. But before we do anything, I've already noticed that I actually do not have the sound enabled. There we go. And without further ado, let's do it. So we're going to be looking at an outlaw strat. It's kind of wild, I know. Outlaws with Lakota? What a... What does that kind of mean? So basically, kind of think of a German Merc build, but kind of make that native-y. Make it native-y, and you've got what this is going to kind of be. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued. We are going to be looking at the deck very shortly, and it is, of course, with Le Inquisitor, also known as Ertan, quite well known to be playing with mercenaries and the like in the game. So... It's good that we uh, that we have him, so hopefully we're going to be able to learn quite a bit here. Elian, welcome to the stream. Welcome, everyone. If you're watching this on YouTube, if it does make it to YouTube, welcome, welcome, welcome. So we have Le Inquisitor here uh, on the north side of the map playing as Lakota in the red. And on the south side, we have my good friend Passy. Still playing this game. He hasn't uninstalled it for the 15th time or whatever. Here he is playing as the Brits in the Cyan. And uh, Elian, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the firm. Hang on a minute, BB. You're on holiday in Jamaica and you're watching my stream. What are you doing, good sir? You're in Jamaica, my friend. There shouldn't be any Twitch watching happening. I appreciate it. I appreciate the commitment, but oh my, that is that is something else. Anyway, let's have a look here. So this is the Outlawry Outlaw. Let's have a look here. Oh my lord, look at this, ladies and gents. We have the basically the silversmith here, or the astute trading, where villagers gather coin from the tribal marketplaces faster, and the yield from them is higher. We have three sets of coin-costing units in age two. Wow, we we also have the lynx pelt trade here. More valuable lynx pelts enable your villagers to gather coin from the marketplace 20% again. So we've got 20% here, 20% here, and 20% yield. And we have the fur trade where you can exchange all of your food for coin as well if you need it. We also have earth bounty, which is a juicy coin trickle, and we get an increase of gather work rate for estate. So this is pure, pure madness here. So let's have a look at Inquisitor. He's opened up kind of the normal way, the one that I've recommended in my first five minutes guide. We open up with a TP. We're going to be aging up here. One villager less on 13 villagers. And it's going to be the chief and tribal marketplace. Double marketplaces going down here, ladies and gents. So I think, honestly, the Inquisitor here is pretty much just going to be gathering coin nonstop. And he's going to have just a few vills on food here. To just get villager production. That's the way that I see it. But I may be wrong. But he needs to get his first card in. And I think he's probably going to be able to send it immediately. Potentially. Is going to be his first card. And Passy here on the other hand. Is going for. Uh, it's not for a VC boom. No we've got the, just a three settler. Kind of just all vills on wooden transition. Going to be getting as many. Manor houses down here as possible. And he's going to be grabbing himself a 90 wood treasure. Very, very nice for him there. Let's have a look at the Inquisitor. It does have the first card available. We don't actually see a trade post here at all, ladies and gents. No trade post has been opened up yet. Which would be quite an interesting one to do if you can do it. Because that's just going to help you get, you know, further cards. You know. Um, you know. And we do see, yes, the Chief is getting you the, that wood shipment, which is the one that I, I recommend in my first five minutes guide to get the 400 wood age up. And now what we're doing is we're going straight into four Axe Riders here. Okay, interesting. And we're going to be dropping a native embassy, ladies and gents. So this is your saloon equivalent for the, for the natives. And you can recruit outlaws here. All civs may recruit native warriors from settlements they are allied with. African civs can recruit warriors by forming alliances when aging up. So with the native here, you could potentially take native settlements on the map, native TPs. And we are going to actually see a TP. Okay, that's good. That's something that I mentioned. So that 400 wood, he's going to be using some of that for the TP and to get the native embassy. And immediately going to be getting gun running coming in here. And immediately is going to be going for the Renegado. 
And we're going to see how much these Renegado cost here. More population for one of them. But doesn't matter with Lakota. This is a great thing about going like outlaws or mercenaries with Lakota. is the fact that you don't have to build houses. So it, it's such a benefit. And now we're seeing four cav coming in. And we can see the Renegado here. 110 coin each. And they are a skirmisher unit. So it's going to try and get in as many of those. Four cav coming in here. So yeah, you can get gun running. You can get gun running from the native embassy in age two, it seems. And I think the gun running is the one that enables you to create mortars. Is that right? Later on, instead of getting the mortar card. So we are seeing astute trading. So we're not actually going to be seeing a unit card coming out here, a military shipment. We are going to be seeing basically the silversmith. We're going to be getting 20% bonus for our tribal marketplace. And we're going to be getting 20% yield as well but look at this he's got 13 villages on coin only three on food here to continue food production and the Loot inquisitor here is basically just keeping passy in his base and we can see passy here walling up here quite effectively going to need to do that against axe riders going to be dropping a barracks down in the bottom right part or bottom part right next to the map here he's going to be losing a villager does lose an axe rider though and now we see the first batch of renegados coming in here and he's just going to continue with the renegados to create the outlaw you need to pay 700 gold for gun running i see gotcha so that is a big investment isn't it we need the guide for TP, TP market and, and 15 vil fast age although it might be a bit hard to manage at low levels but even 16 vil fast age is fine yeah this is a problem so the way that i'm doing these guides is i'm not going through every single variation i'm, I'm kind of just going for the most sort of popular or standard and also th the easiest one as well there are obviously loads of variations uh, some sieves have more variations than other than others but look at this we've got 13 renegados and now we're going to be shipping 700 coin here so we've gone for a lot of eco now astute trading and the chest of 700 and he's just going to continue making these renegados it's amazing and this is going to go really well against passy because passy's going full musk here and we can see passy is now going to start to get the musk hus and we're going to see these renegados in action they're going to be able to do some serious damage here 18 range as well and they're actually going to be really clearing up the musket. And I love the Axe Riders coming in here just to tap, just to tickle the musketeers to snare them. So the Renegados can keep charging. And boom, we're going to be seeing that in action right now. And some Hussars here are going to be a potential problem. Remember, we do have the extra 4.4 movement speed here thanks to the Explorer. And that obviously Explorer has gone down. They're going to be in a little bit of a sticky situation. But there's so many Renegados here. They, they nearly one-shot the Hus here. And now we're seeing our next military shipment, guys. The Cheyenne Riders. They are going to be good in melee against Hussars. Perfect. And now the Comancheros, which are the Dragoon-type units. So this is unfortunate for Inquisitor here. It's just going to be losing quite a few of these, which is really unfortunate. Maybe should have waited, potentially, but it was kind of unsure. Maybe didn't scout, potentially, whether or not there was going to be a stables there. Did he see the stables? He did not. He did see a building at the back there. So now the common chairs are coming in. They're going to be able to deal with these Sars a little bit better, I think. But yeah, these Cheyenne Riders are going to be good. So score not looking amazing for... Inquisitor right now because of all those units such high value like 110 coin each and there was like 20 of them so you know that's like 2,000 coin over uh, getting lost there which is which is really unfortunate we do have another card available what are we going for are we saving for cowboys potentially all the Cree Cree allies would be good no we're going for Takala soldiers okay quite a good one the Takala soldiers going to be able to clear up the musketeers well we do have the Cheyenne Riders here as well. And we don't... I don't actually... I actually can't see what units are available from the native embassy right now for Inquisitor. So we are going to have to see that. But 
Don't worry, the Takata soldiers are going to be coming in very shortly. But they seem to be doing a pretty darn good job against the remaining Musketeers here anyway. And Passy here is just continuing to play H2. No plan of getting into H3 here at all. And we do see some longbowmen here, which is really not going to be good for uh, for Passy here, to be honest, because uh -huh. these two Takalas, Lance Cavalry coming in here now. Yeah, Ertan or Inquisitor, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Ridiculous shit sieve for bastardos like you. Oh no, Passy's getting mad. He's getting mad at the Lakota Outlaw play. I mean, it seems quite straightforward, doesn't it? I mean, I, I do see that Mercenary play, the macro is very, very basic. You just need to be able to create villages. Lakota doesn't require houses. You don't need to worry about wood. All you need to do is drop some tribal marketplaces. And remember, I believe tribal marketplaces are free, aren't they? They're free now. Pretty certain they are. And... Yeah, there's, there's not much really involved. I, I think maybe Inquisitor here might want to drop a market, maybe get uh, an upgrade, potentially. Who knows? Laming with a lame sieve, says Cavelli. Cavelli? I mean Kaleli, sorry. Yeah, the Cowboys are really going to be good here. Oh, I've just seen that. It upgrades your common Chiros to Cowboys. I've just seen that. So all of these guys here are going to get upgraded. Is there anything else here? Um, now that's a really good one because it adds extra line of sight and the bullseye charge attack that's insane and he's also got cav damage as well and if he needs to age up then he that's the only uh, that's going to be the only tricky thing if he needs to age up now he's got 24 cowboys here and um, there's a lot of musk here however he needs some Kree trackers as his next card maybe needs to keep up with those renegados and that's exactly what he's doing and Passy's having none of it. He's continuing with the Musk production. He is reading the rune quite well here, folks. He is he is responding with a, a correct composition. But, I mean, when you've got this many cowboys, it, it can be quite scary. And the raiding aspect is huge as well. And, and the issue is, is that Brits are going to start to struggle with food on this map. They're going to have to come out of their base. And there is this food here. This is the next hunt, so... Passy's got to really protect this as best he can. We see those Renegados. There's not enough quite there yet. He probably needs 20 of them to be in a decent position. But, I mean, that's a lot of units. And I think he's just going to get straight on top of it. Needs to be a little bit careful here. Not too sure what the micro was there, to be honest. Hassars are easily going to be going down here. Quite easily getting dispatched. And now we are going to see those nine Kree allies, ladies and gents. They're going to be coming in. And it's annoying that I can't see what he can make here can't see what he what he uh what he can build from that native embassy because my, i myself always get confused with natives outlaws and mercenaries and depending on the map i believe mercenaries change mercenaries part some of the mercenaries are map dependent so outlaws i i don't entirely know yeah, so that's pretty much all you get, isn't it? The Pistoleros, Comancheros, Renegados, and the Captured Mortars. Yeah, if you go gun running, you can get Captured Mortars. So that is that is one of the only ways of getting real decent siege with Lakota, is you can either go for the Age 4 Mortar card, which is this one here, Advanced Captured Mortars, or you can build a native embassy, and then you get the gun running technology in Age 3, and you can then make mortars in Age 3 rather than waiting for Age 4. Anyway, enough of that. We're seeing the Kree trackers. They're out. They're out and about. Look at them. Absolute monsters. High HP. And we now have some skirms for Ertan. Now, the only issue with Ertan here is is always with, like, whether it's mercenaries, whether it's outlaws, it's gold. You're going to run out of gold at some point, And you need to end the game relatively sharpish you don't want to be playing like 25 minutes into the game because you start to run out of all your gold and you are screwed so that is the only downside of, of doing this kind of strategy uh we are going to see a fantastic engagement here by by inquisitor a lot of skirms on the back line here and these longbowmen are holding their ground though that we don't seem to see any kind of lance cavalry to Carter soldiers are gone Nothing here to clear up these longbow. And Passy is managing to hold here. 
And Ertan going to be getting the cavalry damage here, 15% damage extra. And he is only building from one native embassy. I'm pretty sure you can build more than one. Let's have a look. I'm pretty sure he can, right? Yeah, you can build three. So maybe he might need to do that because he's stacking up so much coin and he can't actually use it to, to get anything out. So maybe building a second embassy might be the way forward here. Okay, so now Passy continue with the longbow production. And yeah, I think he's looking pretty good. He's just going to continue in age two. He's managed to secure this hunt, which is really, really nice. There's some hunts on the left-hand side here. He's probably going to have to go across at some point. Inquisitor, on the other hand, what is he doing? He's now getting a corral down. So he's actually going to start to get some axe riders. I think it's definitely needed. And he's starting to get his hunting dogs in as well. So he's starting to differentiate just a little bit from the outlaw play. <coughs> yeah, just a little bit. I mean, we probably knew that was gonna that was gonna happen, right? At some point, that he were, he was probably gonna deviate from that at some point because it's just the gold; it just can't hold up forever. And he is gonna try and nab this front coin here. Passy gonna continue in age two here. He's not having it at all. He's he's not comfortable even thinking about aging up just yet he's on 14 manor houses so he can build a couple more manor houses here to get his eco going 46 fills for him inquisitor actually on 39 villagers how is that even possible 39 16 minutes in yeah yeah i guess yeah this lynx pelt is going to be great 20 percent extra for gold gathering as well so absolutely huge passy going to make the decision to move forward here is he going to siege this tribal marketplace down? Nope. It's not going to bother with it. You're going to go straight for that trade post. No villagers on this side yet. Oh, no. There are the two villagers. I didn't see them. Okay. A lot of troops here, though. A lot of axe riders, which is going to be very scary against these longbowmen. So he probably would be comfortable maybe getting another batch of axe riders here to really just even out the composition here because that's a lot of crossbowmen that Passy has there. 20 longbow, sorry, not crossbow, longbow. Four settlers coming in now. He's running out of cards. He's used all of his cards. And Inquisitors here is going to make the connection. And he's going to be going in. Look at all the Renegados on the back line here. And finally, the Axe Riders are going to be able to get onto the front line. Is it going to be enough? Are they going to be able to push through that Musketeer front line and get to where they need to get to? Lombowmen trade just so well against all of this. However, they are slowly getting eaten up here. And there's still so many Renegados and Kree trackers taking down these Lombow here. And looks like these Musketeers and the army is unfortunately going to get cleared up here for Passy. But a very interesting build all round. And we do see another batch of Axe Riders. Axe Riders, like, he should have trickled these Axe Riders in a little bit earlier, I would have said. Um, but uh, a crazy, crazy style of Lakota that I've never seen before. And I don't know whether or not the benefit of having this is simply because it's unusual. So the benefit of, of this strat is it's unusual. People aren't expecting it. So you can catch people off guard. I don't know whether or not it's actually vi fully viable. You know what I'm saying? It, it does make sense. You, the population, you don't have to worry about building houses, stuff like that. You've got to give it You've got to give it a try. Uh, Passy in chat here, he's not happy at all. He's, he's quite upset. Of course, he's only going to showcase the one I lose, but not the rematch in which he gets wrecked. Well, that's just how it is. We've got to showcase different strats, unusual things, try and metacraft, understand, are some of these things actually viable? Are they not? And also, it's kind of fun watching, 
you know, for a caster's point of view and from an audience point of view, it is enjoyable, entertaining to watch different ways of playing a Civ. And probably if you get beaten by this, it's probably not the most entertaining thing for you, uh, the most enjoyable thing. Passy is the only one to see him win. Might as well FF and get rifle riders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, we're just, we, you're just trying different things out. Just enjoying the game, exploring different avenues of civs, you know, and some, some might work and some might not, you know. And uh, this one is very, very interesting. And I think that it could be very good against someone that is just not expecting it at all. And I think there's probably other ways that you could go about this as well. You, you could try and get a market a little bit earlier so you can get that extra coin gather rate a bit earlier potentially. Also dropping a second native embassy. I think there was quite a lot of gold backed up and uh, potentially later on getting a second native embassy could be quite good. Um, but yeah. There we go. Welcome Lionheart. Glad to have you here. Hope you enjoyed that one guys. Uh, some of you did, some of you didn't, but you're just going to have to lump it. That's all I can say. Uh, we've got 25k here, economy for Passy. Yeah, so obviously a head in economy here for the Brits. And uh, yeah, really, really enjoyable. I enjoyed that one. That was really, that was really fun. Fun and interesting.